So this is the first video for eight uh, lectures for 8.8 .8, applications of logarithms and exponential functions. Okay, so we're going to start off with a problem that we saw seen before. If a radioactive material has a half life of 10,250 years, how long will it take for 10 grams of the substance to decay to two grams? So we start with 10 grams of the substance and we want to know how long until we have two grams if it decays with a half-life of 10,250 years. You can do a quick estimate of this if you take, okay, so in 10,250 years, you'll be down to around five grams. In 20,500 years, you'll be down to about two and a half. So it should be maybe 20 something thousand years, a rough estimate. So I can tell if I get way off. Uh, the difference between this and what we did in a previous section, in the previous section, uh, we, were solve, we weren't solving for, in this we're gonna be solving for something that's in an exponent. So we'll have to use a logarithm to solve it. And before we weren't doing that. It says that's the same with all of the problems in this section. So I would first write out the formula now this is a little different than what we saw before. Before we saw a um, a in the in the base here, and the a was less than for decay would be less than one. Instead of putting the a there, we we used e because we like e in calculus a lot, and we used a minus k. So the minus k. So e to the minus k is actually a and then it's raised to the t power. So it's just a different form. So you need to learn this form here. Although honestly, I think that they usually tell you because they used to have two completely different methods of doing this exact same problem. And I wrote an email to them and I told them it, it was confusing the way they did it. And they took out, they took out one of them. <laughs> I, I didn't really want them to do that, but that was their solution. So, um, yeah, so I think they usually just tell you now on all of them, they just tell you which form they want, okay? So A of T, A is a function of T, that's the amount of the substance, equals the initial amount, A sub zero, uh, times E to the minus KT. The thing is we don't know what K is. So it's a lot like those proportion problems where you didn't know where K was. So you have to use the half-life to find what K is. That's the first step. So I wrote out, so we started with 10 grams and in 10,250 years, we'll have five grams because that's the half-life. So my amount is five here. That's the original amount. That's the, that's the time in years, 10,250, uh, for 10 grams to turn into five grams. It's a half-life, right? Half-life means how long before you have half as much, okay? And then we don't know what K is, so we have to solve for K. Now you could do this with an A here instead of the E to the minus K, and it'll still work. But the good thing about E is you can use LN, a natural log, and it'll cancel instead of giving you, you know, ln of some number. It'll just come out a little nicer is all. So I divide that out and I get a one half equals, which you'll always get with these half-life problems, one half equals e to the minus, and I just wrote the time in front, uh, minus 10,250k. So the print's a little bit small, I was gonna rewrite this, but. I just found out at the last minute that I had neglected, I just skipped over this one. I'm almost done with all the videos, uh, with uh, all the video lectures, and I missed this one somehow. So I'm going with the uh, older and somewhat smaller print. So I hope that's okay. Maybe on a laptop, it's a lot bigger than what I'm seeing. <laughs> So I needed to solve for the exponent because I need to get to that k up in the exponent. 
So I need to get rid of the base E. So I do ln of both sides of the equation. So ln of, I just wrote one half as 0.5, okay? ln point of 0.5 equals ln of E to the minus 10,250K. That's the proper way to do it, even if you've seen it done some other way where you move stuff around. Uh, the proper way is just to compose both sides with the ln, the natural log, okay, log base E. And then on the left, you end up with log uh, or ln of 0.5, natural log of 0.5. And on the right, the ln and the exponential function base E cancel and you just get the exponent, which is um, minus or negative uh, 10,250K. And then of course you just divide out that exponent and you get what K is. Uh, ln of 0.5 is actually a negative number. Ln of anything between zero and one is a negative number. So this is actually gonna turn out to be a positive number. But that's okay, I mean, you're just gonna put it in your calculator and uh, that's what I got. I wrote it in scientific notation. But what I would do the smart thing to do is to use your calculator here. So you, you get this number, ln.5 divided by this number here, this 10,000 something negative, and it, it'll spit out something like that. And I rounded it off, that's why it's approximately, but I would just put it, use store, and then put it in x equals. In other words, put it in the memory. If you don't remember how to use the memory, just search for it online, memory with the name of your calculator, and um, it should give you an example, and then just follow the example. And then what you do is, when you type this out with the other numbers they give you, when you get to K, just put X. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now you take this K and you'll rewrite the original equation. I don't know why I can't get people to do that. It's really foolish not to rewrite the original equation with the K in there. Now, if you stored it in memory X, maybe you just put an X there instead of the actual number, or maybe you round it off, but in the calculator you have the real one, either way. But if you don't round it off, or if you do put in a rounded off number, make sure that you keep several digits, several significant digits, that means non-zero, uh, not not counting like the point zero 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 zero. This decimal is actually five places to the left because of the scientific notation. You don't count those initial zeros um, when you're looking at accuracy, okay, for this. So you just want to get, so that's why I recommend using the memory on this, okay? But if you do put this in, make sure that you've got several non-zero digits I have five here, that should be more than enough. Okay, it's because we're dealing with exponential functions. So, they grow fast, so. Okay, so I just put it in, it doesn't look like I put anything in there, but I, now I'm thinking of, I put the, that in the memory. And I actually use my graphing calculator where I could put it in as a the memory K. So that's why I put K there, because I'm actually gonna type K. Uh, but I switched my lecture notes here to this course and I forgot to change that K to an X because it's I put it in the memory X on the, on the calculator for our class. And now I plug in the other information that they had. So how long will it take? So you're trying to find T for 10 grams. So the initial is still 10 to decay to two grams. So I replaced what was five when I did the half-life thing, when I figured out K, I replaced that with a two. And then this, oh, I actually wrote it as an X. Okay, good. I did write it as an X. I just can't see because the print's so small. <laughs> no, I changed the K to an X here because I'm using the X memory, right? And it talks about how to do that there. Okay, and I have to solve for t, and I got that. x is a known number. It's the number I calculated before. It's actually k. This uh, 6.7624 times 10 to the minus 5. That's what x is there. 
Okay, now I need to get to the X, so I need to get rid of the base E, so I take LN of both sides. Sound familiar? Yeah. LN of the left side, LN of the right side. On the left, you end up with LN of 0.2, which you'll end up putting in your calculator. And on the right, LN of E to the minus XT, the LN E cancels, you just get minus XT on the right. That's just that inverse function thing. Right Now we're trying to solve for t, not x, <laughs> the time. x is the thing in your calculator. It's an actual number. So I'll divide that. And then when I type it in the calculator, I'll actually type it out using that x button, um, which is in the memory. It says like x, y, t, I think theta, and n, or something like that. Uh, five five letters on a single button. Those are five different memories. Okay, and it'll just tell me the time. And I rounded it off. It would have, the problem would have to tell you where to round it off to. But this seemed reasonable uh, because you're not going to get it accurate to the year because there's going to be, uh, this is like kind of theoretical, but you know, there's going to be impurities and stuff like that that's going to mess it up a little bit. Okay, so I got 23,000, which is around what I figured by just having things, right? I, I said like somewhere around 20,000 years, and it took 23,800 years. So I'm pretty sure that's correct because it's reasonable. So I wrote down the reasonable part at the end. I did it at the beginning uh, in the lecture here, but on, on paper I did it last so it's kind of good you have it written out. You can see what I actually did. I'm just having it, having it and having it again, right? And since I was supposed to get down to two grams and not two and a half, it has to be a little longer than 20,000. So that looks good.